Bit of a different video this week, but it's one that speaks to a subject I'm pretty passionate about, which is democratizing access to private investment. Now, at the end of last year, I went to New York to do a series of interviews with various people in the blockchain space. And one of the interviews that I just remember really well was with Kendrick Wynn from Republic. Now, Republic is a, an investing platform and invests in all sorts of different private companies in different sectors and different spaces. But they're about to launch their own profit sharing token, which allows anyone who buys it to benefit from the investments that Republic has made. And when those are acquired or they go public, then those profits will be circulated back to owners of the token in stable coins. And I just love this because it basically means that for as little as $10, anybody anywhere can gain access to the benefits of private investment. If you've ever heard of the term accredited investors, that basically means that anyone with 200K a year salary or a million in assets can be an accredited investor. But for everybody else, the door is shut. And that's about 92% of the population. But for as little as $10, you can gain access to the private investment market. So when I heard Republic Know was coming out, I actually went back to the interview that I did with Kendrick and rewatched it. And I was still so taken by his passion for what he's doing, his story, and what he believes in. And if there's one thing that's really important about blockchain, it is that idea of democratizing access, allowing people an opportunity they wouldn't have had otherwise and have not had before. And in the times that we face now, the ability to just invest $10 in what could be the next Facebook, that's pretty cool. So I hope you enjoyed the interview. It was a blast re-watching it. And yeah, this is Kendrick Wynn. Just hold it up in front of your face. Mm -hmm. um, good, thank you. Looking straight at Robin, just having a conversation. <laughs> Hi everyone, Ken Gwynn. Uh, I run an investment platform called Republic, and it's a four-stack fundraising platform. That also includes token distribution, fundraising for token projects, but most of the companies that we're dealing with right now don't even have anything to do with crypto. Over time, they will be. So my whole family immigrated uh, to the US from Vietnam in many ways kind of you know, live the American dreams, and I think my story couldn't happen anywhere else. But the last one of five, everyone um, is based in California, and all, you know, professionals, doctor, lawyers, and the like, never got to invest in startup because they're in the ecosystem, but they were outside of the Silicon Valley. Um, and we launched Republic with the whole mission of enabling access. When we launched Republic, we did not have blockchain technology in mind. We knew it exists, but it you know, was a little bit further away. And now it's one of the key elements that will expedite access and inclusion uh, when it comes to investing. Blockchain at the end of the day is a technology uh, that I think will permeate and impact every aspect of human life. Um, my focus right now and Republic's focus is in fintech financial technology. Uh, and I think blockchain in a couple years will fundamentally change the way that we invest, the way that we bank, the way that we transact basically all aspects of the financial system. We live in America, one of the most financially advanced and accessible ecosystem. So it's easy to see, but a mom in the Philippines or Vietnam or Ecuador wanting to even buy a product in the US and how to pay for that product if she doesn't have a credit card. She may not even have a bank account. Forget about investing or buying public stock. Just buying product across international border today is an immense challenge. And that's already been fixed to some extent by people owning major crypto assets like Bitcoin um, and transact. But it's only a glimmer of the, of the future ahead. Here in the US, there are many areas that are completely overlooked and that can benefit from a more interconnected, more easily transactable world. Alabama, Alaska, and I think talents exist everywhere. The question is, how do you make it possible for an upper middle class person in China, in Brazil, to fund an entrepreneur in Detroit? And out of that create wealth and, and businesses here in the US. And of course, the reverse is also true. ICOs that you saw in 
2016 and 2017, leave aside the legality of it. Um, but you see that worldwide participation uh, by individuals in private early stage companies, truly unprecedented. And I think that's uh, unfortunately not talked about uh, often enough. And if you imagine that at scale, um, how much more powerful um, that energy, that money, uh, can drive the next wave of innovation. Two things that I'm so excited about, um, and I've been in fintech for, for long enough. One is the ability for anyone and everyone to participate at tiny amount, unless you can allow unless you can make it economically feasible for a student in Bangladesh to invest $5 in the next movie, you, you can't really have access. And now, not yet, but soon, in 2020, possibly at the end of 2020, you can have fractionalization automation that allows for private investing at that scale. And what does that mean? It's more than just return on investment. It means that people around the world get to decide, get to vote, on the type of businesses, the type of products that they want to see in a very impactful, direct way. And I think that's just got to be the future, uh, entrepreneurship as a shared economy. If you want to participate in entrepreneurship, you can be an advisor, an investor, and in many cases, an, a very active early adopter of a, of a new trend. You can't have agency unless you have that flexibility, that is, that, that capital, that gain, that buys you time. And the only way that you can have that, or the main way that you can have that is by investing and getting that upside potential. Now, if people are not allowed or are not able to invest early, they locked out of that upside return. So by giving people a choice of being part of a story, that access and that being part of like the world, that story, I think is necessary for humanity and necessary to, to drive that next uh, iteration of, of uh, the economy. It used to be that companies like IBM's and, uh, and Dell created jobs, but Google and the next wave of mass companies based on technology eliminate jobs. So how do you narrow the wealth gap around the world? There are really only two ways. One is education, enabling training people to, to be more skilled, and that takes time with its own inefficiency. And the other way is allowing people to generate more wealth. You can imagine Facebook, if you allow the first 10,000 or 100,000 early adopters of Facebook to invest $10 a pop into the company, now you have a bunch of millionaires in countries around the world that 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 otherwise that still do not have have that kind of capital. So weaving back into into our belief that micro investing will change that dynamic and will will add jobs and you know distribute the wealth a bit more fairly. And that's why sitting here even this opportunity to talk about what Republic stands for, what blockchain technology can do. Uh, I think that's by media uh, is the only is the main driving force of adoption in the in the time that we're living in for any new technology for any new company. Um, this is just crucial. In some way, that's the most powerful way of storytelling, right? Enabling other people to tell their own stories. I think that's just the most powerful way. Great. I would love to talk to you more, but I have a plane to catch. Um, <laughs> so unfortunately, I had to rush up and catch a plane, and I could have talked to Kendrick for at least another hour. It was that fascinating. And just his belief, his passion in the mission of blockchain, in the good that blockchain can do, is so exciting. And I can't wait to see what they do next. I will, however, say that this token is not built on Harmony. It's actually built on Algorand. So why am I talking about it? Well, the fact is, this is important. You could build such a platform in Harmony, but the fact that it has been built at all is what matters here. And that message, that idea, that progress is what's important, not where it was built. So we can put tribalism to one side and celebrate what I hope will be a really successful platform, granting access to private investment for anybody 
anywhere. So that's it from me. I hope you liked the video. And if you did, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. And if you didn't like it, maybe try watching it in the dark. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.